Hello there. You're welcome to another episode of To The Point Code. In this episode, we will look at how to generate a single APK file for our Expo React Native application. We will go ahead to see how to test the generated APK file on a device. So let's go. The first thing we need to do is to set up an Expo account and integrate it into our workflow. We saw how to do that in this short video that I'll link up here and also in the description below. Now we'll demonstrate the APK generation using a to-do app that we built in a past video on the channel. I'll also link it in the description. So we open the project in the code editor and configure our app.json file. So under the Expo key, we have to make sure that we've given our application a name. This is the name that will appear on the home screen when we install the application on a device. So it has to look nice. Now the slug refers to a URL name that our application JavaScript file will be published to. We need to provide a version as well. We can change this whenever we create a new version of our application. Also, we need to provide an icon and we did that while creating the project. Now we are generating an APK which is for the Android platform. So under the Android platform, we make a change. We need to add a package key. Now this package will take a value that looks like a domain, but it shouldn't be an actual domain pointing to any website. So we can use anything that makes sense for your application. So for my application, I'll use to the point code dot to do app. You can use whatever you like so far as it makes sense to your application. Now once you've done that, we can go ahead to start the build of our application. So we save and head to the command line. So we use the expo build command to build our APK. And we'll pass some options to it. While doing this, you need to ensure that you have internet access. Now we are asked to provide a key store value if we have one, which I don't, so I'll let Expo generate one for me. Now we wait for the build to finish, but we can monitor it using the link that has been provided here. Now checking the options here, we can view the build queue status. Now on this page, we can see some statistics about other builds that are happening. So for now we wait for our build to finish, and after it's done, we'll be provided with a link to download our APK file. So after about 25 minutes later, our build has completed successfully, and we are provided with a link to download our APK. If we check the dashboard in the browser too, we will see that we have a link here to download it. So let's go ahead to download our APK. Now our APK download has completed. Now before we move on, it is always recommended that we find a way to keep the key store values of our application. So to get the key store values, let's go back to the command line and run a command to fetch them. So run the command expo fetch android key store. Now we see our key store credentials and also a file has been generated for us. So we have to keep these values safely and also back up the given file to a safe location. We can see that the file has been generated here and you have to find a way to keep it in a safe location. So now we want to try to run our APK file and we can do it in several ways. 
First of all, we can copy the APK file onto an Android device and install the application on the device. Also, we can make use of USB debugging to install the application on our device by connecting it with a USB cord. Also, if you have an emulator, we can test our application by dragging the APK file and dropping it on it. So first, let's see how to do it with the emulator. So now we navigate to our APK file and drop it onto the emulator. Once we do that, we see that our APK is installing. Once the installation has completed, we can check our app drawer for our application. Now in the app drawer, we see that our application has been installed here. So we can go ahead to open it. Now we see that the application has been installed successfully on the emulator and it is working. Now let's try to do it with USB debugging on an actual device. So the first thing we need to do is to ensure that USB debugging has been enabled on the device. So we go to the settings to find out. In the settings, we scroll down to the bottom. Now we will find the USB debugging in developer settings. But if you don't see developer settings here, then it means you haven't enabled developer settings yet. So to enable it, you go to about phone. And under the software information, you press on the build number 7 times. Now we see a message down here saying that developer mode has been enabled already. But if you haven't done so already, you will see something else which goes like you have enabled developer mode. So once you've done that, you should be able to see developer settings in our settings. So now we go to developer settings. In the developer settings, we scroll to USB debugging. Now we go ahead to enable it. Once we've done that, we should be able to run the application successfully with USB debugging. So let's go back to the PC. Now back on the PC, we connect our device to the PC using a USB cord. Now on the command line, we check if our device has connected successfully. If you have set up Expo and React Native development on your PC properly, this should work with no problems. So on the command line, we run the command ADB devices. Now we see that two devices have been attached here. The first one being my actual device that I connected with the USB and the second one being the emulator. Now to install the application on the device, I'll run adb install followed by the name of the apk file. So I have to navigate to where the apk file is and run the command. I have it in the others directory. So now let's go to the directory of the apk file and copy the name. We can also rename it to make it easier to work with and I will just copy the name. Now we'll make the install using adb install. But since we have two devices connected, that is the emulator and my actual device, we need to add a D flag to direct it to install it on the actual device. So we use adb d followed by the name of the apk file which we copied so once the install is successful we can check our device to see if it has been truly installed on it so we check the app menu so in our app menu we see that to do app has been installed down here and we can go ahead to open it. Now opening the app, we see that everything works fine. So we've been able to generate an APK file from our Expo React Native project and go on ahead to test it on our emulator and also on an Android device using USB debugging. And that's all for this episode. 
Thanks for watching. Please leave a like and subscribe. Also leave a comment for me in the comment section below. You can say anything at all and I will see you in the next episode.